welcome to another unboxing video from theplayers8.com. My name's Alexander, and today we're taking a look very quickly at Rifles in the Pacific. This is a solitaire only game from Tiny Battle Publishing. Now you see some kind of a folio game. This is a sequel or a follow up game to Rifles in the Arden. Um, so this, you can, it's a small game, right? And this is a introductory, very um, light, easy to get into solo war game. Um, it's got a small footprint, at least the original did, and it's it's just a neat game and a very portable one as well. So, well, let's just unbag it, see what we get on this one, and how this may or may not be different from the original. So the design, ugh, I'm going to butcher this. It's from Gotardo. Zancani, and if that's not pronounced correctly, I apologize. That's how I'm pronouncing it. Okay, so just get everything out of this bag, and I already like what they've got here. Okay, there is a lot of stuff, and it fits very, <laughs> very tightly in this folio. So getting it out, you just gotta wiggle it a little bit. Okay. Okay, so this kind of. Two and a half sheets of counters here, which we'll get to in a second. Rules, plates, and some roster sheets. Okay, so we'll start with the rules. So it's your big letter sized rules. Interesting, you got a blank inside cover. And these are the these are the missions. Mission one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight missions which that's the same as the first game. Uh, okay, these are the rules, my bad. Okay. So you got eight missions, but it tells you what kind of terrain to put where, tells you what the enemies do on a die roll, um, who they target when and where. And there's an events chart as well, where to put events and what they do when you pull them. And then it's got your you know, number of turns, objectives, and daytime nighttime chart kind of a it's a patrol right so nice and clear this is your kind of campaign book so to speak and you can play them sequentially through as a campaign or you can just pick a mission and play it they don't take long to play so it's a nice little filler or something to do on your lunch break at work so rules in the rifles in the pacific rule book um, you have that iconic picture in the background now the one thing about this game, and I don't know how this one's going to end up, just looking at it, hmm, interesting. So Rifles in the Ardennes had absolutely nothing to do with the Ardennes. You could play as the Russians against the Germans. Obviously that wasn't didn't happen in the Ardennes, it was more of like European theatre World War II like tactical war game. That's really what it was. This one does have some more theme to it. Okay, and you can see that quite simply from the maps. So you have a shore invasion with the palm trees. And on this one you've got, I don't know, some kind of ground. Looks like a bigger beach, maybe. But really this is, this is a lot of background. The terrain is based on little chits that we'll put out. So we'll get there in a second. But the units are marines and it's, it's there's commonwealth forces against Japanese and there's a marines against Japanese. And I think that's it. So it's a bit more grounded in the title of the game. So this is at most really 15, 16 pages of rules, basically. But I mean, these rules are so. <laughs> the space between the lines is huge. There's a lot of white space in this, so it's not a complex game. It's not something that's going to bog you down in the rules. It's very easy to just read through this once, use the play aids, and go. It's not a complex game. But it's got examples of the counters when it's talking about them. Again, this is a very easy game to pick up. And for that reason, having never played this, but the original, I would recommend. This one, it looks to be more of the same, so if you like the theme, probably it gets a recommendation from me too. Um, this is a unit roster, you're going to fill it out, there's kind of two of them I guess, just based, you're just going to photocopy this, you're going to photocopy the back of the rule book, because you'll be writing in the names of your dudes, whatever you want to name them, the notes as they grow through a campaign, things like that, 
or if they get wounded. It's got your turn track and it's got your different charts and tables on here as well. So really, you'll, this is kind of your major thing you're going to have out. This and then the board and then there's a few charts. But the charts are a lot of, and this is an explanation of how to do it. Oh look, they have a colored version if you want it instead of black and white. This is printer friendly though. So this is an explanation of these charts. So there's United States Marine Corps, there's Japanese Army, Special Navy Landing Forces, and then Commonwealth Forces here. So these three charts are um, 1943, 1943, 1943, okay. So th these are army buying points. That's how this game works. A scenario might give you X amount of points. Let's say, for example, in this one here, it says, where does it show that? Pick. Oh gosh, where does it say that? If it says it anywhere. I forget where. It might just be a generic number. You get X amount of, you get like 10 points, let's say, for example, to buy with. I forget what the number is. Oh, build point. It says 10. Yep. I'm an idiot. It is 10. It says build points 10 right there. I knew I remembered that. But you get 10 build points, and so from that, you're going to purchase um, with your kind of build points here what you, what you want to have in your squad. You get to choose that. So if I want a dude with a, a Lee Enfield, just a normal leader, one, bone, one point. Dude with a little Sten gun, one point. If I want to start getting in my Bren guns, um, mortars, those get much more expensive. They're more powerful, so to speak. You could do one with them. If I, got, I do it with a Piat because I need to take out a tank, usually the mission might, might say, hey, go and knock out a tank. So you'll know beforehand, yeah, i got to buy a Piat. Um, if you want to bring in a Cromwell or a Sherman, um, it looks like, hmm, I don't know if you can buy those or if those are things that you fight against if you're playing as the Japanese. Because I believe you can play as the Japanese. That's usually what this means here. So you can play as the Japanese and you go and fight Shermans and things like that. Yeah, Special Navy Landing Forces, and then they have Imperial Japanese Army, Commonwealth, the US Marines. But you build your little squad, does not take long. 10 points, most things are one, two, three, or four. So you have like four or five counters, you organize them into little squads. And for example, on this one, you'll land on the beaches, go across, the, you know, through the shallows, through the beach, and into the palm trees, right? And then here, there'll be some kind of objective that you're trying to do. Really, really simple. The counters are pre-cut, and these are the same kind of counters that you'd get in something like Tango Down, or a lot of Tiny Battles, other games. They punch really easily. They've got the little side gates on them, so if you were so inclined, you could cut them off, but jungle, plus one, that's the type of terrain. Village, plus two, type of terrain. Here you've got your little Japanese anti-tank rifle. And on the back of it, you've got the, the, uh, the Chiha medium tank. But these punch really easy, more buildings, deep jungle, obstacles, just trees. Here's the sea for when you're moving through sections five and six on this map. Here we have some foxholes, some jungle, or markers for the events. So the events, you kind of shuffle them up and put them out. And so when you flip it, it says, oh, do this thing. And those, if you remember, were in here. So when you pull a certain number, it refers to this. And this is different, as you can see, from this chart. So the, the events change throughout the mission, which is nice and adds a lot of flavor and variability for such a small game, at least. Um, some suppressed markers, cover markers. And then we have here the Commonwealth Forces. So you got your mostly riflemen, a couple of Bren guns, flamethrower, Piat man, and your little SMG Sten gun. These are little... These are more... Where's the... Oh, we skipped over the... Uh, skipped over the Marines and the Japanese here. I don't know how I missed it. Okay. So Marines... You got your normal rifleman over here, Thompson submachine gun on the leader, flamethrower, bazooka on the back of these. Looks like heavy machine gun. So yeah, light machine guns. You got BARs on this side. This one's a second bazooka man. This one's a 
a heavy machine gun, it's a 30 caliber, a couple of mortar teams, a couple more submachine gunners, and then we have Imperial Japanese forces, rifleman, leader with a pistol, flamethrower, light machine guns, submachine guns. There's a, what are these, these called, these knee mortars, or grenade discharger, I guess, that's what they call them. Um, submachine gunners, heavy machine gunners. But, th but that's it, right? This is not a ton of complex rules. I, I promise you, this is a game you will whip out that rules book, you blast through it, and then you just play. And that's the easiest way to learn it, is to just follow it, set it up, and play it as you go, and you'll learn it just like that. Um, frankly, I haven't played this game in a while, but I could probably play this right now. Um, just, just by looking at the charts, setting everything up, and having everything right here. Um, tells you the sequence of play, what you do when you activate, how many actions you have, what you do with them, modifies close combat. It's all very intuitive in this game as well. So you blast through the rules, this is a game you'll get to the table. Um, so this is Rifles in the Pacific, which I actually really like the artwork for this. I don't know, it's just a bit more colorful than its predecessor as well. And it's, I don't know, the Pacific again, if you've watched any of my channel. Um, something that's very interesting to me. So. This is Rifles in the Pacific from Tiny Battle Publishing. Um, check it out. Uh, thanks for watching. I've been Alexander from theplayersape.com.